this is part four of the series validating the plan and we continue with the topic distinction within the phases or essentially the uniqueness of the various periods or dispensations in the timeline. In the previous video we had a look at the distinctions between Israel and the Gentiles. Uh, in this video we're going to continue this topic and discuss the distinction between law versus grace and also prophecy versus mystery. I'd like to start with the difference between prophecy and mystery on the timeline. Now, uh, of all the scriptures that I could have selected, uh, I'm only going to deal with one scripture for prophecy and one scripture for the mystery period, because the difference between these two scriptures uh, is a stock. Uh, it really does contrast. Um, in the language that it uses. Um, so if we have a look at the prophecy example that I'm using here, Peter uh, is, is busy teaching in the synagogues. Uh, this is Acts chapter 3, verse 21. And uh, as part of the teaching in that synagogue, uh, under the circumstance of um, healing that man, that lame man at the, at the uh, gate called Beautiful, um, Peter mentions this, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the time of the restoration of all things, which, by the way, refers to the millennial kingdom. And then he says this phrase, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now, this phrase is used in Luke and in Matthew uh, and in a number of other places in the word. But um, the key uh, to understanding this verse is just the word spoken, right? Which God has spoken. In other words, which God has declared, which God has made known by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. All right, so take note of that little phrase, because when we have a look at the opposite side of the coin in the mystery period, uh, there is a very, very big difference um, comparing this phrase with the one that we're going to in the next slide. This is one of my most favorite verses uh, in all of the Bible, and uh, there's so much to discuss in this verse, so I've got to watch myself for not going off on some side road with uh, regard to other details. But um, let's stay on the topic uh, and have a look at the mystery uh, phrase that I'm comparing with our previous phrase. Uh, Paul is writing this um, verse or set of verses in Romans 16 verse 25. Uh, it's, it's actually part of the benediction of Paul to end the book of Romans. But uh, verse 25 reads the following. Now to him that is referring to God or Jesus Christ, who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Now notice the next phrase. Kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for the obedience to the faith. Now uh, coming back to this phrase, uh, please note kept secret. Now that is the big word here. Um, kept secret since the world began, which is completely different to the previous phrase in the previous slide. Uh, which uh, spoke about spoken or declared by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This is completely a different phrase where things were not spoken, things were not declared, um, or things were not made known until Paul voiced these mysteries. 
um, starting with his uh, um, apostolic ministry to the Gentiles. And uh, notice that uh, the word but now, the words rather, but now comes out as well because this is this is the dispensation of the mystery or the body of Christ. This is um, after the prophetic uh, dispensation. They've, of course, been blinded and uh, God's attention has moved now towards the Gentiles. So um, everything that Paul writes and everything that Paul declares uh, in this particular dispensation is new. Uh, we know it's new because we know it was kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest. So um, this is how we know that everything in the epistles of Paul, everything that he wrote is new. Uh, it's, it was never mentioned in the prophetic period. There is no prophecy uh, that you'll find in the Old Testament or in the Gospels. No word spoken of the mysteries of the, the new doctrine and the new gospel uh, and the new information that Paul laid open before uh, his hearers and his listeners. Um, so everything in this mystery period is essentially the body of doctrine that we as the church, the body of Christ, uh, should adopt and accept uh, as opposed or compared to the prophetic period which belonged to Israel. Here is a very interesting verse which, in my opinion, can only be explained by that phrase, kept secret since the world began. Um, this verse uh, really took me by surprise. It's a, it can even be a very contradictory verse uh, if you don't understand it in the right context. Uh, so let me read it through uh, to you, and then I'd like to add a little bit of commentary on it. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 16. It reads as follows. Therefore, from now on, can you hear Paul's language again there? From now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, uh, the very first thing that really catches the reader's attention here is that first yellow phrase, yet now we know him thus no longer. You know, if you don't understand the verse in the context, you might even think, how could Paul actually write something like that? How can he instruct a believer to not um, know Christ uh, according to the Gospels? Now, there is a very good explanation for this if we have a look at the commentary that I've added into this verse. So if we just go through it again, let me just add the commentary now. And then uh, uh, if you haven't come across this verse uh, in this context yet, it should clarify a bit for you. So uh, let's read it again. Therefore, from now on, again, as I mentioned, that's Paul's language. But now, from, it, from this point onwards... All right. Remember, Paul is writing a new set of instructions, a new doctrine. Um, we've just entered into the mystery period. Paul is writing to the Corinthians here, which is uh, fairly early in his uh, ministry period, um, and um, the body of Christ. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the 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 Jews have been blinded. Um, so he's writing this. Uh, to you know, to a brand new group of people, the Gentiles, uh, in this regard, and he's saying, from this point onwards, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. In other words, um, at that time, people would have still been alive when Jesus was um, uh, in his three years of earthly ministry, when when he was walking the earth. So uh, Paul is actually saying here, even though we have known Christ in the flesh, you know, in other words, known him uh, as that minister under the law, 
Yet now we know him thus no longer according to his uh, earthly ministry, um, according to his three years of ministry under the law. So we don't know Jesus Christ according to he, the, the law, according to the, um, the teachings of Christ under the law. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... Now, this little phrase is in Christ. Paul writes hundreds of times in his, in his epistles, we are in Christ, uh, simply meaning that we are saved. We are regenerated through the grace gospel. Now, if we are saved in and according to the grace gospel, in other words, we become a member of the body of Christ, he is a new creation Old things have passed away. Now, those old things is the law, the beliefs, the customs, the practices of the law in the previous age. That is the prophetic um, or the Israel or law phase of the timeline. So Paul is saying when we are a new creation, all of that old customs and beliefs and the law passes away. Behold, all things become new that all things meaning it's the new doctrine it's the new gospel it's the new set of instructions and information that was revealed to paul by the risen christ that he uh, provides uh, as the apostle to the gentiles that he writes about in his letters to the churches so it's a incredible verse another verse that is packed full of relevant information but also it can be a controversial verse if you don't see it in this particular context now in the last few slides we've been having a look at the difference between prophecy and mystery uh, in the next few slides i'd now like to have a look at the distinction uh, or the uniqueness in the the timeline uh, with regard to law and grace. So we're just going to have a look at a few verses uh, in both categories, and uh, you can then, uh, you know, weigh it up for yourself and see, there is, you know, there is a big distinction or a big difference between these two, and uh, determine for yourself where you stand upon this. So uh, let's have a look at the law part, and then we'll get to the, the uh, grace part. All right, under the law verses, I would like to read a few of them. Deuteronomy 27 verse 26 simply reads, Cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of this law by observing them. All right, so there's a command in that verse to observe the law. This is in Deuteronomy. It's in the time of Moses, and this is actually Moses speaking to the nation of Israel. Similarly, in Exodus 21, verse 1, it reads, Now these are the ordinances, or laws, you, Moses, shall set before them. That is, the Israelites. So it's God commanding Moses, in this case, to set these laws before Israel. And then, of course, Joshua 1, verse 8, which is a fairly famous verse, uh, reads, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night, that you may observe to do all, or to do according to all that is written in it. So there are a few verses that instruct Israel from Moses, from the Lord, from the book of Joshua, that are instructing the Jewish nation to observe the law, to obey the law, right? You, uh, this is pretty clear. Um, Israel was under the law, and these verses confirm that. Um, from the New Testament, Matthew 5 verse 17, uh, it's a fairly long uh, passage here, but um, I'm just going to highlight the uh, um, areas where Jesus himself is speaking to Israel uh, and the Jews and mentioning that uh, the law matters right so let's have a look at this it says do not think that i have come to destroy the law or the prophets jesus speaking 
I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, that is the law, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now this is Jesus speaking to the Jews who were under the law. And he's speaking and promoting the law and saying uh, to his fellow kinsmen, obey the law, right? Live righteously that it exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Um, do not uh, teach men not to live by the law. Uh, and Jesus himself said he has not come to destroy the law, the prophets, he's come to fulfill them. So this is uh, very clear verses uh, speaking about Israel being under the law, Israel having to observe the law and make sure that they lived it on a daily basis. Here are two more scriptures that I'd like to just uh, use to continue to enforce this idea well, not an idea, but this um, fact that Israel was under the law. Uh, Galatians 4 verse 4 reads the following. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, in other words, born into the flesh, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that is, the Jews. In other words, Jesus' earthly ministry at this time in the plan of God, uh, Jesus was sent for the Jews uh, to redeem the Jews. And of course, uh, as part of the greater plan of God, the, those Jews, of course, would then go out and carry his word to the nations. And that, of course, we know will occur in the millennial kingdom. But at the time that Jesus was born, his purpose was to uh, to go to uh, the Jews to, to his nation, take the law to the nation, prepare them, uh, bring the gospel of the kingdom and uh, redeem those people, those Jews who are under the law. Uh, another scripture here as well, just to enforce the idea that the Jews were under the law, uh, is Peter. This is Acts chapter 10. Um, uh, the scripture reads this, it's Acts chapter 10 verse 28. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful, maybe I should just give you a quick uh, bit of context. This is again Peter's account with the Gentile Cornelius, where Peter took the gospel in his one and only time to the, to the uh, Romans, uh, to the Gentile nations. This is actually under God's instruction for Peter to do that. Otherwise, Peter would never have done this. Uh, his instruction and the last instruction that Jesus uh, gave Peter and the other apostles was not to go to the Gentile nations, but to start and stay in Jerusalem. But nevertheless, God instructed through a vision to, for Peter to go to Cornelius. And um, it is actually this account. Um, and uh, Peter has just entered the house of Cornelius. And then he says this to Cornelius and the other members of that household. He says, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. So again, as we can clearly see, Peter, even at this time, this is approximately uh, 10 years after the ascension, approximately, uh, even at this time, uh, Peter still was under the law. Uh, there, was, there was no hint of the law not being part of uh, that of the Jewish lifestyle, right? Remember, Paul brought through the new doctrine and the new mysteries with regard to that we are not under law, but under grace. But at this time, Peter is still very much under the law. We can see that easily with this phrase or the mindset and how he told this 
household that it is unlawful for me to even be here. All right. So in the next uh, uh, um, slide, we're going to round it off by having a look at what our dispensation is about, where the Jews were under the law, as we've seen through all of these verses now. Um, we will notice a very big distinction in the mystery period where Paul writes to us with regard to not being under the law. Now, having come through all those scriptures that refer to Israel being under the law, let's have a look at the contrasting verses uh, from the grace period, uh, where Paul, in most cases, speaks these things and says that we are not under the law. Right? Uh, this must have been very difficult for Jews in the Gentile churches to accept, uh, but it was a new dispensation. It was a new set of doctrine, and these were the instructions that Paul was given by the glorified and risen Christ to lay before the church. So uh, let's have a look at some of these verses. Let me just mention that uh, these verses will need a lot more explanation. Um, uh, I'm just going to mention the verses now so that we can contrast them with the previous slides and the verses under the law. But uh, we will, of course, at a later point in the future, deal with videos that uh, delve deeper into each of these particular verses. In other words, what does it mean to not be under the law? Um, what does it mean to be uh, dead to the law and alive to Christ? So there we will go into much more deeper teaching and, and, and describe and explain more what it means. But for now, I'm just wanting to use these verses as comparison. So let's have a look at them briefly. Romans 6 verse 14 for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. All right, Galatians 2 verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. Romans 6 verse 7. For he who has died... By Christ, that is, died in Christ, has been freed from the from sin. Romans seven uh, verse four. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ. All right. Now these law, uh, the laws, these verses um, certainly do oppose the verses that we've come through in the previous slides, which which uh, speak of Israel definitely being under the law and having to live in observance to the law. Um, so keep yourself available for the video that I will post at a later point that deals with uh, what it really means to not be under law, what it really means to be dead to sin and dead to the law. Okay, one last scripture here that I just want to drop off um, as an ending is 1 John 3 verse 8. Let's just read this quickly. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Notice that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Now, what does that mean? Because you and I, in the flesh, still sin. We, we are clothed with this flesh nature that is prone to sin. So what does, what does it mean here when John writes, Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For God's seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. So, this verse uh, ties in very nicely with what Paul refers to as not being under the law, as being dead to the law and dead to sin. What does it really mean? All right, um, It is impossible for you and I, being in the flesh, not to sin. Uh, flesh sins, that's the nature of flesh. But uh, very clearly, Paul and, P and uh, John here are saying that those who are born of God do not sin. All right, so I will uh, expound on these verses in a later video. But uh, for now, 
uh, very interesting uh, to just to see these verses uh, as opposed to or compared to the law period, right? That's the context of this particular video is to show you that the body of Christ is not under law, whereas Israel was under law. That's the distinction of these phases at these particular periods of time.